Hello everyone, I'm Zach and welcome to my first hit film tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this Marvel style intro sequence in hit film pro. Now before I get started I just want to note that my project settings are 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. When you're doing this project your exact values and timing might differ. Now to make this effect in hit film express you do need to purchase the starter pack add-on. So the first thing we're going to do is create the look of those comic pages sliding down into frames. So I already have a new composite shot created. I'm going to set the duration to only five, about 5 seconds because that's all I need it to be for this project. Now you just want to start dragging in all of the images you want to be your comic strips. I'm just using exported frames from my previous projects. If you want your intro to be the same length as mine, I would recommend having 32 different images. So select all of your images on the timeline and then zoom out in the viewer so you can see above the shot and then drag all of them so that they are just out of frame. So now open up the transform properties for the bottom layer and reset the position. We want to do this so that our comic strips don't start with the black screen and so that there's a picture underneath to start with. So now open up the transform properties for the second image and enable keyframing for the position. Step ahead four frames on the timeline and set the Y position to zero. Then select the next image, open up its transform properties and do the same thing. Activate position keyframes, step ahead 4 frames and set the Y to 0. To make this go faster, search for position in the search bar at the top of the timeline and repeat this step for every single image. And there's the last one. As you can see, our images are falling down just like the pages in the Marvel intro. Now to make this look a lot better, you want to enable motion blur for every single one of the layers. Now we want to create a new gray layer and go to the effects panel and search for the cartoon effect. You drag it onto the gray layer and open up the properties. I like the look of the white lines preset, except I changed the edge color to black. Next, drag on the half tone color effect. I chose the fine preset. Note that this effect is not in HitFilm Express unless you buy the starter pack add-on. So I didn't quite have enough images to go to the end of the shot, so I'm going to duplicate the composite shot, rename it, and then drag it in right at where the other images end. Now you'll notice that it cuts right to the first image again and it doesn't fall onto the screen like the rest of them. So we'll have to fix that. Go into the duplicated comp and turn off the very bottom layer. Then you also want to disable the grade layer. This makes the first few frames transparent so that the images fall onto the screen like we want. Make sure that the duplicated comp is under the gray layer in the main one so that all the comic book effects are still applied to it. Now we're going to work on making the logo. So create a new composite shot. I'm going to call it Logo Holder. And I chose to set the duration to about 12 seconds. Create a new text layer. I set it to be the width of the project and 300 in height because that's how tall I want the text to be. Now type in the text you want, select it, and increase the size until it fills the text box. I chose to use the font called Bebis, but if you don't have this font already you can use Arial Black and transform the text layer up on the Y axis. Create a new white plane, hide it, and scale it down so that it creates a nice border around your text. 
try to make the border even on all sides. So once you get it lined up nicely, duplicate the white plane layer. This is so that when we draw the mask, you'll be able to still see the original underneath. So on the top layer, drag the rectangle mask tool over it until you get a nice thin border. And then select the invert box in the mask properties. Now you can remove the bottom layer because we only needed it to see underneath. I'm going to drag in a reference image of the actual logo and further adjust the settings. You can change the letter spacing in the text and the size and shape of your border. So once you get everything looking just the way you want, create a new composite shot. I'm going to call it Text Holder. Click OK. I'm going to create another new text layer. This time make the height a lot shorter because this text is going to be a lot smaller. Decrease the text size to about 45 and type in what you want. Make sure that the text is centered and I chose to use a font called Good Times. I already had it installed on my computer and it looked pretty similar to what I wanted. Again I'm going to drag in the reference image, make sure it's the right size and line up the text as best as I can with the letter spacing and by moving it around. So now I'm going to make another composite shot, and this is going to be the final comp where we build the main animation. So from the media panel, drag and drop in all of the elements we just created. Hide these layers because they won't be seen. Set the logo to 3D and click yes when HitFilm asks if you want a camera. Now drag in the comic images. Make this layer 3D as well. Then duplicate the layer and rename them to keep track of what they are. The top one is going to be for the logo, and the bottom one is going to be the background. In the Z position for the background, set it to negative 1 so it doesn't overlap with the logo layer. Now drag your logo on top so you can see it and make it visible again. And then select the logo comics layer and scale it down until it meets the edges of the logo. You can hide the main logo again. So now go into the effects panel and search for the set matte effect. Drag it onto the logo comics. Then choose the logo holder as the source layer. This will make it so that the comic images only show where the logo is. Next search for the 3D extrusion effect. This is also available for Express in the Starter Pack add-on. Choose settings that you like. I chose to go with the depth setting of 80. I also chose to shift it on the Z-axis by 80 as well. Now to enhance the 3D look of our text, create a new light layer. Drop the intensity to about 50% so it's not so bright. You can choose to light this however you want, but I chose a simple lighting setup of one point light directly in front of the text. If I go into top view, you can see where the light is. So now drag the fill color effect onto the comic images for the background. Set the color to be a nice red color. Set the blend amount to zero and skip ahead about four seconds. Then go one more second ahead and animate the blend amount to go up to 100%. Select both of the keyframes and set them to smooth. Now you can see that the comic images slowly fade in to turn red. Now we need the red screen at the end to go on for longer, so drag in the white plane we created earlier and line it up with the very end of the comic image's background layer. Rename it so you can keep track of it. Then copy the fill color effect from the comic background images and paste it onto the new plane. Disable keyframing for the blend amount and make sure it's still at 100%. Now make sure that this layer is 3D 
and to make sure it's in the same position as the background images layer, parent it to that layer and reset the position. So now there will be a seamless transition from the comic images background layer to the new plane. So I imported a metal texture and I'm going to drag it onto the timeline at the same time as the fill color effect kicked in. Make sure the layer is 3D and scale it up so it matches the logo again. I chose to add a blur effect to this metal texture so that there wasn't quite so much detail. Now add the fill color effect again but turn it off for now. Go down to the comic images for the logo and copy the effects that were on it and then paste them onto the new metal layer. Keyframe the opacity to start at zero and skip ahead until the plane is fully red again and set the opacity to 100%. So now the background slowly fades to be red and the metal texture slowly fades in. Re-enable the fill color effect on the metal texture. So it's a blend amount to 100% about 10 seconds in. Also keyframe the depth on the 3D extrusion effect. Skip back 2 seconds and make sure that the blend amount is set to 0 and that the extrusion is at the maximum depth that you want it to be. Then go to the second keyframe for the extrusion and make sure it's set to 0. So now from 8 to 10 seconds the extrusion depth goes down to 0 and the metal texture becomes completely white. The shadows on the text were a little too dark, so create a new light, set it to a very low intensity, and then make the type ambient. Rename your light layer so you can keep track of which one is which. And if you're not happy with how the metal texture is reacting with the light, you can go into the material settings and adjust the different sliders until you get it looking just the way you want. So now you want to duplicate your metal texture and in the effects, change the set matte source to use the text holder instead. Now the text is getting cut off a little bit so you want to drag down the metal texture so that you can see the entire text. Go into the 3D extrusion effect and at the first keyframe reduce the depth so it better matches the size of the text. Then you can trim this layer to start a bit later. Now create a new plane and set the color to black. And the effects panel switch for the light flares effect. Now change the settings to get the flare looking the way you want. I chose to use the digital stripe for the flare type. And under global, I set the color to be a pale blue. I also adjusted the hue shift slightly. And in the other element section, I increased the brightness and set the color to be a more saturated blue. I also unlinked the scale in the layer's transform properties and increased the scale on the X to stretch out the flare. Set the layer's blend mode to add so it removes the black and you can see the flare on top of everything else. Now drag the flare to be positioned so that it lines up right in the center with the text and is just out of frame. Then keyframe the center position and the intensity. Go ahead one second and create another keyframe for the intensity. And go ahead one more second, set another keyframe for the center position and move it all the way across the screen. Then set the intensity to zero. Go back to the first keyframe and set the intensity to zero as well. Now the flare moves across the screen, gaining intensity as it reaches the center. Also, adjust the pivot position so that the other elements of the light flare are still on the screen. 
no matter where the flare is. Keep the position keyframes as linear and set the intensity keyframes to smooth. Now create a new point layer and call it flare control. Then go to the first keyframe for the hotspot center. Trim the layers to start at that time. And copy the position values. Then paste it onto the new point. And the light flare set the position back to 0, 0, and for use layer, select that new point. Now the point layer controls the position of the flare so that we can parent other objects to follow the flare. Now select the middle keyframe for intensity on the light flare effect, press control, then click and drag to duplicate that keyframe. You want the light flare to completely cover the letters both at the start and the beginning. Now drag in the white plane again. Rename it to text mat because this is the layer that will control the text layer fading in from left to right as the flare passes. Use the rectangle mask tool to draw a nice mask so that it completely encompasses the text layer. In the shape settings for the mask, increase the feather strength. So go to the point where the flare is completely gone and move the mask so it's in the center covering the text. Now duplicate the flare control point and rename it to match control. We don't want the plane to move completely off screen with the flare or else the text will fade out again. So go to the point where the text is completely visible and make a new keyframe. And delete the one after it. Trim this point layer to end at that last keyframe. So now this matte layer will only follow the light flare until this point. Now adjust the position of the layer and the mask so that it lines up with the edge of the flare. Once you're happy with the alignment of the mask and the flare, select both the point layer and the new plane and make them a composite shot. Hide this layer, and then on the metal text layer, drag on another set matte effect, and choose the source layer to be the matte. Set the blend mode to subtract, and then invert it. Now you'll see that the text appears only where the white plane is, and this gives the illusion that the flare is drawing on the text. You may need to go into the text mat comp and adjust the position to make sure that the text doesn't come on too soon or too late. Now go to the point where the metal texture and the red start fading in. Then activate keyframing for the camera's position and all of its rotation. Now go back to the very first frame and start adjusting the camera position to be where you like it. You can reduce the pause resolution so it'll be easier to move your camera without lag. Bring the camera nice and close to the text, then rotate it so it's looking at it from the side. Once you're happy with the angle of your camera, play through the timeline to see if you can see the black background. To fix this, drag the different rotation keyframes until it disappears. This is a little bit of trial and error, but eventually you'll get the animation just right. Now our camera twists and pulls back to reveal the logo just like in the Marvel intro. 
Now make all of these keyframes smooth. Now to add some finishing touches, create a new composite shot, call it Final. Drag in your main sequence and add a grade layer. I dragged on the cine style effect which gives it a quick cinematic look. Reduce the color adjustment to retain more of our original colors. Keep in mind that the cine style effect also doesn't come with Express but is available in the Film Looks add-on pack. Now in the main sequence transform properties, go to the first frame and increase the scale, and on the last frame reset it back to 100. This will create a constant zooming out motion. Now you may have noticed that at the end the sides of the logo's border are getting cut off slightly, and to fix that, just scale up the metal logo texture so that the whole entire logo fits inside. And that's how you create a Marvel style intro in HitFilm Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any more suggestions for future tutorials or effects I should try, leave it in the comments below. Be sure to like the video if you found it useful and subscribe for more HitFilm tutorials.